The butt and the front of my stomach, I'm not very happy with. And I was in so much pain, my bum was throbbing, my bum was burning me. It was literally like, imagine burning yourself with hot water. I, I think I like bumped my butt cheek on something and it like got hella swollen and red and I thought that I was like had an infection in my butt cheek. I never can like be happy but it's like. Beauty standards vary across nations and can vary amongst cultural groups within a nation and even within eras. Now, what's a BBL? The American Board of Cosmetic Surgery states that a Brazilian butt lift is a specialized fat transfer procedure that changes the size and the shape of the buttocks without implants. Excess fat is removed from the hips, abdomen, lower back, or thighs with liposuction, and a portion of that fat is placed strategically into the butt. The technique dates back to 1960 in the bustling city of Rio de Janeiro. Today, the VBL is considered the most deadly surgery in the world. What are experts saying in regards to the death rates? Well, a study was comprised of 853 surgeons. They were surveyed for the Journal of American Society of Plastic Surgeons. They recommended 200 to 399 milliliters of fat are injected into the buttocks. They also stated that the risk of death is 16 times greater when the fat is injected into the muscle. Mortality rates were 1 in 3,000 in 2018, according to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons. As of April 12, 2023, the mortality rate of a VBL is 1 in 2,351. So the mortality rate has increased, and most likely this is due to social media trends, lack of post-operative care, increase in the amount of doctors not specialized in plastic surgery performing the surgery for money. So for example, in Georgia, since doctors do not have to be board certified to perform a BBL, they only need to be a doctor in medicine. So this means that your family medicine doctor who typically manages, you know, eyes, mouth, nose, and throat could potentially be out here giving BBLs to people. So society's desire for instant gratification and doctors completing more surgeries in one day than they should could also be a cause in why the death rates have risen. Doctors completing more surgeries in one day than they should resulted in Florida setting limitations on how many BBLs can be completed in one day to ensure that the doctors are not operating on patients when they're fatigued. Despite the guidelines put in place to protect patients, some surgeons find a way to circumvent the expectations in hopes of getting their slice in this billion dollar industry. Why do people risk their lives for the coveted Brazilian butt lift? Are the results worth the maintenance? And why are people like Kim Kardashian in Black China removing the fat by reversing their BBL? When you look up to those in entertainment and seek to have what they have, some will do anything to get their chance at fame and money. More than half a million people a year risk their lives getting a Brazilian butt lift to look drop dead gorgeous. Prior to the BBL movement, many people around the world did not consider an hourglass body shape as attractive as thin bodies. And of course, this varied amongst different nations. In South Africa, Europeans colonized the area and saw women with a different body statue that wasn't what they were used to seeing. Larger breasts, thin waist, and larger bottoms. Suhura, also known as Sarah Bartman from the Shosas tribe in South Africa, was ostracized for her body after moving from South Africa. A Scottish military surgeon had a side business of showing animals and sources claim that Sarah was asked to travel to Europe to make money by showing her body. Although I have a, an inkling considering the time period that she was trafficked and they are just lightening the story. In 1810, at 22 years old, Sarah was now in London attending what some would call a freak show and was exploited for several years. People speculate that she either died of smallpox, syphilis, pneumonia, and penniless in December 1815. Now, during her lifetime, Sarah was shipped around France, Holland, and Great Britain. 
Later, Britain's Victorian fashion added a Victorian bustle, which is in the back of a Victorian era dress that has additional fabric and an industrial bustle to enhance the bottom area in addition to the natural contour and enhancements that the other Victorian dresses provided before. Similar to the bodies idealized and prevalent in African descent communities, enhances the bust area, slimmed down the waist, and made the bottom appear even larger than before. The modification to the Victorian era dress, which included the industrial bustle, it most resembled Sarah's body. Now let's fast forward 90 years later. It is 1960 and we're in the United States of America. Many sources cite that the birth of buttocks augmentations began in 1960 to create an hourglass figure to mirror the curvy women in the spotlight like Marilyn Monroe and Sophia Loren. For the rich, vacations in Brazil became synonymous for plastic surgery operations. Brazil is famous for so many things. Their crystalline beaches, their chocolatey brigadeiro, and the sculpted buttocks. And essentially the beach culture. The list could go on forever. However, the birth of the Brazilian butt lift begins in 1960. But Dr. Evo's journey began in 1940 when he wanted to gain expertise in the plastic surgery field. This specialty was not available in Brazil in the 1940s. So he went to the US, France, and Britain to learn more about surgical procedures. When Dr. Evo returned to Brazil in 1953, plastic surgery was not popular. So his focus was initially hand and trauma surgeries. He began working at Santa Casa Misericordia in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's most populous city. Dr. Evo was always a surgeon. However, his clientele and patients were burn victims initially. And during this time, he had an epiphany in which he realized that physical appearance was critical to living a quality life due to the effects of individuals' perceptions of their bodies affecting a person's mental and physical wellness. And evidence can be found on this today. did an experiment with a group of women yep. and they put scars on their faces and yep. they told these women that they're going into a job interview and the purpose of the experiment is to find out whether people with facial disfigurements face discrimination. Uh, they showed them the scars in the mirror, the women saw themselves with these scars and as they led them out of the room they said we're just going to touch it up a little bit and as they touched it up they removed the scarring completely. So the women went into the job interview thinking that they are scarred but actually being their normal selves. And the result of the experiment is that those women then came back reporting massively increased level of discrimination. Later he started a clinic of his own in which would train other doctors and would later have a surgical technique named after him called the Iri Pintagai technique used for breast reductions. Doctors would travel from all over the world to be trained by Dr. Evo. Dr. Evo Pitangai was one of Brazil's best known plastic surgeons and he's often credited with founding the country's plastic surgery industry. His achievements were particularly notable given Brazil's reputation as a leader in cosmetic surgery and his work was widely recognized both in his country and abroad. Many credit his success to the Brazilian beach culture and strategic marketing such as dinner arrangements, charity appearances, and pro bono surgeries. Sound familiar, huh? Dr. Evo eventually became a plastic surgeon to the stars while living in Rio de Janeiro. Evo passed away after carrying the Olympic torchlight to the flame in 2016 for the Rio Olympics. Although Dr. Evo's health declined, the Brazilian butt lift technique was on a rise all over the world. One of the most popular procedures in Brazil and all around the world is the Brazilian butt lift, which involves transfer from one part of the body into the bum. Although the operation may seem relatively simple, it's important to understand its risks and the benefits. The most positive aspect of the BBL would be the patient is able to get their ideal body and what they deem as an attractive butt, whether it means changing the shape, the size, or both. Additionally, fat gets removed from the undesired areas, although they may not see the full results of their bum until a year later. They still get their ideal body. 
People enjoy the look and the soft feel of a BBL as opposed to implants because they tend to look more natural and won't shift over time. The incisions, they're relatively small and strategically placed so there should be minimum scarring. However, things don't always go as planned. Any surgical procedure, especially when the patient must undergo general anesthesia, is a huge risk of complications. Several complications, whether it's related to anesthesia, recovery, or months after the surgery. Due to the general anesthesia, the patient could potentially wake up during the surgery and feel certain pressures or pains, but not awake enough to notify the doctor that they're awake. Additionally, there's a risk that you could go to sleep and not wake up again. Aside from dying on the bed or shortly after the surgery, I would consider these disadvantages to be drastic. Other complications include infections, bleeding, and scarring. There could also be asymmetry and malformation of the buttocks. There's also a risk of fat embolism, which is when a fat droplet enters your stream. Essentially, Fat embolism can lead to even more serious complications such as trouble breathing, fast heartbeat, blurry vision, fever, and rashes. Another complication includes the body absorbing the injected fat unevenly, so this would lead to a lumpy appearance. Unfortunately, the post-surgical care can be a lengthy process, so you won't see the final results until a year later, so every movement and every decision are very impactful and important. For patients who are self-cautious about their bum or body shape, a Brazilian butt lift can lead to greater self-confidence and self-esteem. Additionally, patients who feel unhappy with their appearance might find greater sense of discomfort and pain after the procedure and recovery. Fluid accumulation, nerve injury, and fat neurosis are a few additional BBL complications that are disadvantages to the patient. It's important to thoroughly research and discuss the procedure with a qualified plastic surgeon before deciding whether a BBL is right for you. I've seen posts on social media stating that girls that have BBL smell bad and I wanted to do additional research into this because when I saw the post it was just some guy that posted it and I figured you know what maybe this guy is upset because girls that have BBLs don't give him play. So I decided to dig into the concept a bit further and upon my further research I found that Fat neurosis happens when the fat from the other part of the body is inserted into the bum or any other location really, but for the sake of this video, we'll focus on the bum. The body is very smart, so it'll recognize the newly placed object, the foreign fat. So for example, the body will react to the BBL and say, hey, what is this bat wing arm fat doing here? This isn't the bum fat. And then the body will begin to reject it and the foreign fats will die in the bum basically the rotting of those fat cells, that's what causes the smell. So fat neurosis is indicated by visual and physical changes in the texture of the fatty tissue, the skin over the fatty tissue, and it can be noticed within months or years after the original surgery. So it's as if you never really can be in the clear when it comes to fat neurosis. So if you have some type of impact from a car accident, for example, this could potentially trigger fat neurosis. Let's start from the very beginning. Initially, the fat neurosis, it will start off potentially as a lump under your skin or bump on your skin. Then the dying fat cells will release an inflammatory compound that causes the skin to look red, bruised, or thicker than it did before and potentially lead to chronic inflammation. But if the fat under your skin has already died, then it'll look dimpled or it'll sag. To remove the smell, potential pain if it doesn't go away over time, if more of your cells are dying, it would be wise to undergo a reverse BBL. Beautiful. Who popularized BBL? Most people would say that social media and Insta models popularized BBL, but you, it's you. You popularize BBLs, even if you might not have a BBL. Let's start off with another little virtual journey back in time to unpack this concept. The consumer of social media and our content intake popularized the BBL. You remember Tumblr? Mm-hmm. I know, good times, right? I love the anonymity of 
Tumblr. Although I probably shouldn't have been on Tumblr at the time, but I digress. This isn't about me. Tumblr was created in 2007 for blogging and posting multimedia, which I loved. Now, Tumblr became popular in 2013, and I'm sure you're familiar with the term Instamodel. Well, before there were Instamodels, there were Tumblr girls. Tumblr girls were described as, you know, a young lady that's considered attractive, she's interested in fashion, and she posts many pictures, you know, of herself, and there's like this distinct aesthetic, right? Think euphoria scenes and moody photos all over your Tumblr life. And then we have Instagram, created in 2010. However, Instagram wasn't like the Instagram that you know today. It was a completely different place without DMs, videos, stories, highlights that it currently has. As social media platforms expanded, so did the followers and the opportunities available to those with tens and thousands of followers and more. Social media models and companies began to see how they could leverage and monetize the exposure as their followers increased, which led to the models being able to negotiate sponsorship and promotional opportunities. Every social media platform is tracking your every interaction or lack of interaction with content. So that like, that dislike, favorite, shared video, it's all recorded. How long you hover over a picture or watch a video, those interactions are fed into the platform. Then it's pushed to others based on the feedback, while also providing dopamine to the recipient of the like on Instagram or any other platform and that's exactly where consumers come into play in regards to the BBL. So you know your dusty boyfriend that's watching the twerk videos of the BBL baddies? He's the problem. The Insta BBL baddie whose photo or outfits you love but not interacting or engaging much with someone who doesn't fit that aesthetic. That basically lets the platform know that this is what you like to see. And essentially, it becomes the norm and over time, in real life, your local baddies and your moms are opting for a BBL. People who have had BBLs and implants believe that they would receive more likes, more followers, and more money. Essentially, social and financial success after the surgery. And this has been the case, especially for entertainers. A good example would be Beckles Amenzad. Some of you may know her as Cardi B. Now, Cardi B started off as a dancer in New York before becoming an award-winning entertainer. She received her first procedure in a basement at 20 years old in 2014 for an opportunity to receive more money in the club. She worked at a predominantly black strip club and noticed the girls with the huge bums and breasts were getting more money from the patrons. She didn't have enough fat for a BBL but opted for butt injections. Some people start off with implants and then remove them and later opt for a bbl for a more natural movement to their bum that's what i'm gonna say i actually remove my ass shots of my butt i remove 95 percent of it and young girls do not not young girls because it's young and older do not whatever you do don't get ass shots. Don't get ass shots, bro. I'm really against them. I'm all the way, I all the way support you if you want to do alterations to your body, if you love your body, whatever the fuck, I'm all the way with it. But do not get ass shots. I would never fucking recommend them. Um, luckily, my ass shots, um, that I did when I was 20 years old, they never turned purple. They never got this color. They never did nothing stupid to me. Like, they, I never felt pain because a lot of bitches be feeling pain and shit. I never felt that. However, like, after I gave birth to my son and I gained all that weight and my ass just looked extremely, extremely big, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I got to take this shit out. I got to fix my shit up. I got to fix it. You know what I'm saying? I got a little, a little something, something. A little something. Tabitha Robinson, or Dream Doll, the reality TV actor turned rapper, is another person in entertainment industry that provided feedback on why she got a BBL. She's had a total of four butt surgeries and ultimately had a hip removal and a butt reduction on the fourth surgery. 
She stated that she frequently experienced pain and almost died. Additionally, we have Winter Blanco. Winter from the Bad Girls Club also documents her experience with a BBL. Roly documents her BBL, which was very worrisome considering all of the circumstances. She said that her doctors cleared her, but the people who were watching the procedure were very worried, including myself, because it didn't seem like the surgery was being taken as seriously as it should have been. Roly commented, giving her take on others' concerns on her BBL. And lastly, we have Renee. Renee is a famous YouTuber in the UK and she also documented her experience with BBLs. Initially, cosmetic procedures such as Botox, fillers, breast lifts, Brazilian butt lifts were marketed to middle-aged women in their 40s and 50s in an attempt to reverse the effects of gravity, multiple pregnancies, weight gain, and wrinkles. Essentially, the cosmetic surgeries were to reverse any indication of aging. However, in the 2010s, the industry shifted the audience they marketed to to include younger women. They included a younger demographic by saying that using the aforementioned surgeries would prevent aging. That notion, coupled with the influx of social media users and the algorithm disseminating the ideal body to viewers, coupled to increase the amount of people who were receiving the BBLs and other cosmetic surgeries. However, they'd have to commit to maintaining any procedure that they received. After the person has received the procedure that they have been dying for, they need to recover so their body can heal properly. After their procedure, if the surgery is success and recovery goes well, the patient still has to maintain the body. So for example, working out to maintain their booty, eating healthy, and potentially getting touch-ups after the initial one in the event that they dislike any aspect of it they have to make sure that they keep that in mind. Now, if the surgery doesn't go well and there are complications, the mental health plummets and potentially it leads to removing the BBL. In the 90s and the early 2000s, we did not have social media like we do today. We had online forums and we had Word Up Magazine, but the beauty standards at the time were more natural and more attainable for the general consumers. With nostalgic styles trending in the mainstream, we've also seen the ideal bodies of the 90s and the millennium becoming more popular, which has resulted in an influx of reverse BBL. A reverse BBL involves a surgeon removing the fat from the desired areas and tightening the skin later to contour the bum in the patient's ideal, smaller, and more natural shape, which some would consider the end of a BBL era. Kim Kardashian and Black China are a few of the famous women removing their BBL by undergoing BBL reversal surgery. Unfortunately, some cannot always reverse a BBL, especially if it's been botched. Now, many say that this is the end of the BBL era. However, I don't really believe that. It may be the end of outlandish body proportions that don't look very natural. I think society and the entertainers are gearing towards a more natural look. If they do decide to get a BBL, it'll be, you know, a bum size that pairs well with their thighs if they do choose to undergo surgery. Ultimately, it's up to the individual whether they would like to get cosmetic surgery. I personally do not have an opinion on cosmetic surgery. I can only say what I feel for my body and what's right for me. I would really recommend anyone who wants to get cosmetic surgery. First, when saving up for that cosmetic surgery, I think you should allot a portion of that to counseling sessions. So you can consistently go to counseling before even scheduling an appointment with a surgeon. I want people who are interested in getting a BBL or any cosmetic surgery to understand the true reason why they're getting a butt augmentation or any kind of augmentation, what past events, current events could affect their decision to get surgery. I think they should review the pros and cons of getting a surgery and if the benefits are worth potentially losing your life. Of course, researching and visiting multiple surgeons with questions is imperative to the BBL surgery process. For example, you want a doctor with an expertise in plastic surgery that is more credible than 
the family pediatrician that moonlights as a cosmetic surgeon to pay off all those student loans. Additionally, I would recommend when people are calculating the cost of the surgery, make sure to include the gym sessions that you have to continue to have, the recovery, the bandages, also budget for surgery modifications, revision, a potential BBL reversal in the event that you know you change your mind or your body reacts negatively, you have money to navigate that process. Most importantly, be cautious. A BBL is a extremely serious procedure and you want a doctor who is going to take the procedure as seriously as you would or should because your life is on the line. Why do you think they have patients sign the procedure in the anesthesia release form that states that you signed off for this procedure and accept the potential results and you release the company from any fault? They know that you might literally die to be drop dead gorgeous. Thank you.